Hi guys, this is Carrie from Chick Ashby Yarns, and I'm joined with you today by Cade, the dog, the gray dog, and Bodie, the brown dog. They're my co-hosts who are already sleeping on the job. Um, so I just wanted to say hi and record tonight's podcast. Um, so let's dive right into it. First of all, I can be found at chickashby.net, and every Tuesday we have a an online knit night and so we are getting more and more people joining that and that's been a lot of fun you can find the link to that in my on my um, shop site chickashby.net and that is in the all the info page there's a link at the top of the page top left of the page and then um, you can also find it on the chickashby uh, Facebook page. So those are the two places that you can find it. I'll try to remember to send out an email invite every week. Uh, I may or may not do so. I'm usually uh, rushing around like cleaning the house and then I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get ready for knit night. So then I rush in the shower and when I come to knit night, I'm usually out of breath and <laughs> got wet hair. But anyway, <laughs> let's hear it for being prepared. So what do I have to share with you this week? First of all, you will notice I am wearing a sweater. I will stand up so you can see it. This is my eyeless that I made. Um, that The red marker was where I was the last time I did a podcast. You can see this is that um, pearl stitch I did down the side to mock having a side, side seam. And then there are a couple of things about this that I will show you. Well, let me stand up again. So the first is that I did a five stitch um, seed stitch along the border, which ultimately was a waste of time because it seems to want to spend its time on the inside of the sweater. So I may go back and tack that down and just make it like a thick button band. Um, but I did it all the way around the neck. So you can see I've got that turned in too. So we're going to have to mess with that just a smidge but outside of that I'm really happy about it it's a very friendly um, pattern it is by Amy Miller A-M-Y-M-I-L-L-E-R the pattern is Eyeless E-I-L-I-S and let's see um, I started it on March the 7th and finished it March the 30th. So it is a fairly quick knit. I want to say that there was days when I didn't touch it at all and days when I went great guns. So, and I know it's been about two weeks since my last podcast. I don't know about you. Is it just me? I'm just totally in a, like a sludge. It's like I don't have any motivation or energy to do anything and I just kind of want to sit and stare at the walls kind of like just uh, <laughs> I hope I'm not the only one out there actually I hope I am the only one out there I hope everybody else is just bursting with energy <laughs> excitement and uh, feeling all kinds of spectacular so that is the first project that I have to um, show you the second one uh, is poison ivy now poison ivy is symbolic to me and let me see if I can let me scooch over so I will have um, room to put the picture uh, I'm gonna put a picture in this corner of what it looked like um, or what it's supposed to look like and I did um, steam block this one and then unfortunately I kind of wadded it up on the table so that is the very first little bit and it's supposed to be on the bias and it's doing short rows and I'm loving the construction so far but I ran out of this colorway and I didn't want to start a new skein because I'm just about to go into a new pattern of it because there's this this bit and then there's like a leafy bit that comes after it and you just kind of switch back and forth but I am I think I may or don't know where is my last short row? I am this much from being done with short rows. 
and you do one every single right side row, so that part sucks. Do you? No. You do one every row, so that's maybe eight or ten more rows. Um, and obviously I'm not going to win at Yarn Chicken. But since, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just frog the whole thing and make it narrower since this is Texas and I'm usually hot at all points. I might uh, make it narrower. I want to say the math didn't add up when I just briefly looked at it because I think this pattern is 45, uh, um, 14, stitch it, 14 stitch repeat and the next one is a 35 stitch repeat. So I'm going to have to go back and look at it again and see what I can't do. But I'm really loving the construction of it so far. It's been pretty fun. It's very popcorny, um, and I, I've been able to just sit and do it while I'm watching TV. Um, now, this is done in the same yarn as the next one I will show you. It's what was left over. I had a partial skein, and uh, I, don't you like how I keep my needles from pulling out? I just kind of <laughs> wrap them around themselves. Um, okay, so this is Amy's, and I'm super excited to share it with y'all. This was supposed to be out much, much earlier than it actually was. Um, again, I, I've just been out of it, guys, and I'm so, so sorry for not getting this to you any quicker than this. But this is called... Rejoice He is Risen, and it is in a doily kit. This is the wool-only version, um, and I did it in Maybe She's Born With It, and Maybe It's Maybe Green. And you will see that there's a cross, obviously, and a crown of thorns, and a uh, fisherman's net, and there's all kinds of symbology in this um, doily. I was so impressed with how many symbols and stitch patterns and things she was able to get in here that were all representative of the project itself. So this is on the website. I will put the link to it below. And uh, it didn't, it took me I test knit it, so it took me longer than I think it would if I was just regular knitting it. But this has been tack edited and test knit, so um, you should be able to just get the yarn and be ready to go. I am offering free shipping on um, chickashby.net uh, with the code free ship. I was going to make it COVID, and I was like, mm, no, we're going to make it something positive. So. The code is free ship, and uh, the kit itself is 20 bucks, and that comes with the yarn and everything you need to make the project, with the exception of beads. Um, I don't have enough beads for all of the, the um, kits that I have, so uh, I'm not going to charge extra for the beads. If you want the beads, then go ahead and put it in your... Um, uh, I think there's a before you check out uh, notes to shop or I, I'm not sure what it's called but anyway there should be a comments box where you can put that if you don't see one when you go to check out be sure and email me via the contact us page and let me know um, the name of your order and uh, that you would like beads and I will um, package those up and get those sent out to you so that is the Rejoice He Is Written pattern. And you can see um, both my sweater and this pattern have not been, um, had the ends woven in. There's a reason for that. It's not that I'm lazy, y'all. Uh, well, it might be that I'm lazy. I lost my scissors, and I have my scissors to where um, I have my darning needles attached to my scissors. <clears throat> via string and so um, I lost my scissors and now I don't know where my darning needles are because they're attached to my scissors 
And I've looked in all the obvious places, so now i got to go around and look in the non-obvious places um, to see if I can find my scissors, because those were my lifeblood of crafting. <laughs> now I don't know where they are, and I'm kind of going to cry. It's terrible when we lose our, essentials, our essential tools. Um, so, I'm not going to cry on camera, I promise. <laughs> Want to, though. <laughs> So this is what I'm working on um, right now, and it is called Summer Games. And this was kind of a palette cleanser uh, after the eyeless. Now, the eyeless didn't need a palette cleanser, but um, I'm a monogamous knitter, and so um, normally what I'll do when I'm about three quarters of the way through a project, I will find my next project so that I can just go straight from one to the other. With the eyeless, uh, it kind of snuck up on me. Um, I didn't realize that I would be able to do the sleeves all in one day. And so when I got done with the eyeless, I didn't have anything to knit. So I was like, quick, I gotta find something. I gotta find something. So find something I did. This is called Summer Games and I, I only, I, well, I can't say I only picked it because of this. But this was also a reason why I picked it. I had these two skeins that I was trying to get used up. And as you can tell, I have um, less of the green than I have of the blue. And so uh, I thought this would be a great way to use those up. And I had a crap ton of this stuff, which is called... Um, Mercerized acrylic. Now, I've never heard of mercerized acrylic. Don't know what mercerized acrylic actually is. Uh, but it kind of weaves, it kind of knits up with uh, a halo. And you can kind of see a little bit of that halo there. Um, so I have a bunch of this stuff to use up. So I thought this would be a great, a great pattern to do that with. And so this is called Summer Games. And it's a really fun so far knit and I did um, lightly steam block it uh, just so you could see the colored bits because the tan bit is garter and the colored bits are stockinette and so the garter was ten tends to eat up the stockinette until it's uh, blocked but that is summer games and I have made a few extra ones where there was bits of where there wasn't color I put in some some little ones now this is the back she recommends tying knots uh, but this is super wash and the knots don't stay really so um, I will probably go back and either weave in those ends maybe using a crochet hook because they're pretty short um, maybe using a crochet hook or I may just put a dab of super glue on them and call them good this isn't a uh, project I'm, I'm super duper uh, invested in because like I said this is mercerized acrylic uh, it's soft I mean it's just as soft as the wool is uh, but I'm not you know oh my god you're putting super glue on it kind of thing it's just you know whatever um, I am doing it on a much larger needle than specified. This is a 7 or a 4.5 millimeter. Uh, because, quite honestly, I live in Texas and I'm hot all the time. So, I did want an open kind of uh, fabric that would breathe. So, that's why I'm doing it on a larger needle. And because I have more than enough yarn to go ahead and finish it. I think I'm on row... Uh, 80 of or 70 of a total of maybe um, 150 so I'm about halfway done and I still have most of my yarn left for that so that's it for my projects for the shop there's not much going on um, I haven't been over there in several weeks I did get one order in this week um, of Julia's Rose and she wanted me to go pick a um, coordinating color for that. So what I meant to do was before I recorded the podcast to um, go over there and get a couple of colors that will work with it. And then um, 
Sorry about the jiggle. I wasn't thinking. Um, go over and get some colors that would work with it and, and show y'all on the podcast. Like, you know, this is it with this color, and this is it with this color, and this is it with this color, etc. Uh, didn't get that done. So I will hopefully do that tomorrow, and maybe I'll post those on Instagram for y'all. Uh, I have a couple questions. So one of them is, are you enjoying the podcast? Do I need to make it longer, shorter? Are you finding that you're forgetting about it? Do I need to talk about it more often? Um, it seems like every podcast I post a question. I don't know if I'm posting it too early in the podcast so that when you finish, you've forgotten that I've asked. Um, or if you're getting bored and taking off before we actually get to the point of the question. So my question for you this week is, what would make it better? What would you like to see me do? Um, what would you like to see me feature other than doggy butts who are um, behind me trying to nest? <laughs> He's got another couple of circles to make before he <laughs> gets gets the bed just right where he wants it. He's, he's pretty funny about that. He loves to make a, himself an igloo <laughs> in the bed. That's why we have such a hard time keeping the bed made is because even when we make it, he comes along and messes it up. Um, but anyway, tell me what you want. Tell me uh, what you like, what you want to see more of. Uh, make it shorter, longer. Um, I can't add any more projects because I'm knitting as fast as I can and you know how it goes where you finish a big knit and you just kind of want something short and sweet to, to kind of ease you back in, um, do a palette cleanser project. Um, I do have some that I'm planning on making as of this moment. That might change as of the next moment. So. Uh, there's this pattern called DFW by Erica Flory, E-R-I-K-A space F-L-O-R-Y. Um, and it's called DFW, so how could I not? Uh, <laughs> how could I not make this pattern? Uh, it does look interesting in the construction, uh, and I did... started it but didn't like the colors I was using so I frogged it and was going to change colors. Um, I'm saying I'm um, a lot. I'm so sorry about that. I said I was going to work on that. Okay, so there's DFW. The next one, when I saw it, I misread it. Um, oh, there I go again. <laughs> you guys know that hubby watches a lot of German TV. And in that TV is a show called Talk Tort. And I originally, um, not Talk Tort, uh, Talk Tort's the main one he watches, but he also watches one called Willsburg. And in, the, in Willsburg, there's a hilarious character called Overbeck. Uh, Overbeck. Yeah, that's his last name. That's what they call him is Overbeck. And he's kind of the put upon detective that nobody gives their due. And so when I read this one, uh, or when I saw this one, I immediately misread it as Overbeck, and I was like, oh, I gotta make that one too. Well, besides that, it's actually a pattern that I like. Um, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's got a great name, but not a great pattern. And so I kind of question whether I'll make it or not. This one is a great name and a great pattern. Turns out it's not Overbeck. Turns out it's Overbrook. And that's O-V-E-R-B-R-O-O-K by Erica Flory, E-R-I-K-A-F-L-O-R-Y. Now, why am I spelling it out? <laughs> I have friends who are visually impaired, and I don't know what they are watching the podcast on. It might be their phone, or they might just be listening to it, because I'm really... Uh, also guilty of listening to TV versus watching TV. And so I spell it out both A, because I don't know that they can read it if I put it on a tiny screen such as a phone, or um, just 
just to help clarify um, if they are having problems reading it or whatever, and if somebody's listening and not paying super attention to the screen itself, they will also be able to record in their brain ha uh, something that they want to go look up or whatever. So I'll put a picture of it right there. Then comes the Hosta wrap by Erica Flory. Are you seeing a pattern? <laughs> I don't know what got me on hers, but there's several of hers that I like. And um, so those are it for my upcoming. Now I have different patterns in my queue, but some of those are winter patterns and I've been sweating my butt off all day. <laughs> I cannot think about winter patterns, y'all. All I want is lace and linen. <laughs> So, with that said, we will get Amy on here one day once this uh, coronavirus is over and we can see each other again legally. Uh, we'll get her on here and get her to do a podcast. That should be fun. We have been doing uh, Knit Night via Zoom. Amy's brother, Jared, has been playing the piano. Um, I think it's been a little bit loud the last couple of weeks, so I think we've worked out that... Um, He'll play, but he'll play in the background, maybe with the phone a little bit farther away from the piano so that we can still hear and chat and talk to one another. Uh, he's got a very wide repertoire. <laughs> Yay, I said it. <laughs> and so um, he goes ragtime, musicals, uh, oldies, pop. He just kind of does all over the place. And it's been a lot of fun having him, so I really enjoy and appreciate that. I think he also is only on there because his kids are not with him right now. So, um, once, he, once they come back to his house, then um, that'll probably change <laughs> and we won't have that music there. So, what else? We miss Jessica. We love Jessica. We're thinking about Jessica. We can't wait to see Jessica again in Knit Night. Right? Yes. <laughs> can't wait to meet Noah in Knit Night. Um, we are missing a couple of people who said they would be here and for, you know, I guess life got in the way or whatever are not. So, once again, I invite them to come. Knit Night's been a blast and we have been having so much fun. Um, so definitely join us Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Central. And when I had the shop open, I was closed the first Tuesday of the month so that I could ten attend the guild meeting. But now that everything's closed uh, and the guild is via Zoom, I can do both. So I did last night, I did the uh, knit night from 5 to 7. And then at 7, I closed down Knit Night and jumped over on the Guild Zoom meeting. So that was beneficial that I didn't have drive time. Because it is way the heck up there when it's in the little retreat center. And it's about an hour and a half one way for me. And that is so far for me to go. Especially on a weeknight when you're battling traffic and... <laughs> I, I know I'm making excuses, but an hour and a half is a little far. So if you are of the guild persuasion and have anything to do with that decision, we need to move it back to the Walnut Rec Center so that those of us in the Southern Hemisphere can attend to. <laughs> um, what else? I, I don't really have any shop news for you. Um, I still don't have the neons mixed for the nail polish. And that is simply because I cannot get my hands on any 91% uh, rubbing alcohol, which you have to have to make neons. So, I will be mixing those as soon as uh, the coronavirus is over and I can get my hands on some rubbing alcohol that people don't need in order to stay healthy. So, there's that. Um can't really think of anything. Y'all like my lipstick? <laughs> the name of it is Blind Date and it is by Wet n Wild. 
and I love it. It's a little bit redder in the video than it is in real life. In real life, it's a little bit more of a plum color, but I'm loving it. And I'm loving being able to have lipstick in the coronavirus. <laughs> it's just like that little thing that you do for yourself, kind of like putting on perfume before you go to bed so that you can you know, just lay there and, and have that pleasant smell as you fall asleep kind of thing. Just something nice that you do to um, pamper yourself. So, uh, White white Doggy is um, circling me and eyeing up my foot, so I better, <laughs> better go feed him supper. I wish y'all well. And uh, comment below. Let me tell. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see different. Um, as always, troll comments will be deleted. But if you come in love, I will accept and and uh, implement your feedback if I can. Um, tell me if you enjoy knit night. If you want to do knit night more than one night a week, we could definitely look at doing that. Uh, we're going to be doing some. Dang it with the us, sorry. We're gonna be doing some online classes where you can, where the classes are gonna be pre-recorded and once you order them, then we're gonna do electronic delivery for y'all so that you can still get your classes without having to leave your house. That's in the works. And we're gonna get, all get through this. I mean, I hope that you are able to stay positive Stay connected, go outside, practice some earthing, you know, take off your shoes, walk in the grass, uh, absorb those, um, I don't remember if it's positive or negative ions, but absorb those ions, allow your body to unwind and decharge from all the stress of the electronics and the radio towers and the cell phones and the laptops and the everything that we've got bombarding our bodies nowadays. So just go outside and take off your shoes and walk in the grass and allow it to heal your body of all of that stress and, and stuff that's part of today's world. Um, dang it with the um, sorry. Definitely going to have to work on that. As I said, I'm not used to keeping up a one-sided conversation. It's pretty challenging. I don't have anything else to share. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're working on. Send me links of the picture, uh, send me links of the patterns that you're working on, especially if they're good. I saw Stephen West's uh, Painted Bricks, I think it's called. It's Stephen West, so y'all know him. And I was looking back through the, the um, Dang it with the ums. <laughs> Sorry. I was looking back through his, you know how you can see the details and then you can see how many people made this project and see their photos of the project. So I was going back through there to see if anybody did it in rainbow order. Because that was my first thought is this would look awesome like stained glass if you did it in rainbow. And um, I love rainbows. And I think it's really terrible that people have been made to feel that they can't appreciate rainbows unless they are gay or supporting gay or advocating for gay. It's like, I don't have a problem with gays, but can't I just like rainbows? Like, <laughs> they're not the only people who can like rainbows. <laughs> so I love rainbows. And I love putting stuff in rainbow order, and it really bugs me when I go into the store and like the the markers are at they have the rainbow colors but they're out of rainbow order and I'm like what are y'all trying to say really are we gonna be petty enough that you're not gonna put shit in rainbow order because think people think you have a hidden agenda like come on we're adults we can handle having stuff in rainbow order without thinking that it says anything about our sexual orientation or who we support or whatever. Like, just give us our freaking rainbows back. Soapbox. Sorry. <laughs> so, 
I was looking at Stephen West's um, Painted Bricks, I think it's called. And I don't know that I want to look it up. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 I might have it. So I was looking at that, and I was looking to see if anybody had it in rainbow order, and I was going back through and uh, saw where somebody shared a way of carrying the yarn for color work in a way that is hidden so that the back of it looks much prettier. And she called it the Jacquard, Jacquarding something or other. Uh, let me see if I can find it quick. What's with the Oz? I am so sorry. Okay, so the the one that I specifically found the technique on is DCA to AMS shawl. The pattern is painting bricks shawl, P-A-I-N-T-I-N-G, B-R-I-C-K-S, S-H-A-W-L, by Stephen West, and so while she didn't do it in rainbow colors, she did show how she trapped the floats using a jacquarding principle, and there was a link to a page that taught you how to do the jacquarding principle, and I cannot wait to try it. It looks amazing where you don't see the floats. And so the back side looks just as good as the front. Well, not just as good because you still got the garter stitch funkiness going on where you change colors and so the black's the white and the white's the black, etc. But I can't wait to try it, you know. And if I don't like it, then it's just another technique I have in my pocket. And if I do like it, fantastic. You know, I had no idea how to join yarns until I learned about the Russian join and now that's the only way I go. Um, so, <sighs> y'all, I apologize so sincerely about the ums and the ahs tonight. I do not know what is wrong with me. Sorry. I apologize. Now I've lost my train of thought and got something in my eyes. <laughs> So that was painting bricks, and I think I'm going to put it together in a kit with black and jewel tones, maybe white and jewel tones. I don't know that that would look good. I think the jewel tones look fantastic with the black. If you guys look at this painting brick shawl, oh my gosh, y'all. And I have a friend, not going to say her name who just blanket doesn't like uh, Stephen West stuff. And she was like, well, I'm a traditional girl. And I'm like, so make it in traditional colors. It's not the, well, it's not always the pattern that is non-traditional. He makes a lot of stuff that traditional people can wear in colors that traditional people won't wear. So just make it in a different color. And so it, bugs me that she just blanket doesn't like it his stuff never having given it a shot if she's tried it and doesn't like it that's the one thing but to just blanket say no is another thing I don't like onions I have had onions many times still do not like onions it, so it yeah it's it just bugs me when somebody says they don't like something and they haven't actually tried it. They're, every single time I've made a Stephen West pattern, I've learned a new technique or a new way of doing things or a new way of doing an old thing that is better and faster and easier. And it just makes me very sad <laughs> and quite honestly get a little bit frustrated that she won't even try it. You know, if you try it and it's not for you, no harm, no foul. But to just say you don't like it and never having done it is a completely different thing. So anyway, the pattern is painting, T-I-N-G, bricks, shawl, 
by Stephen West. It looks like he just dropped it on March. So it's fairly new. And I'll put a picture right here for you guys. It is stunning. And I really want to try it. So. I like, I love the colors he used. I think it would look stunning in rainbow as well. Tell me what you think. Add that to the list of questions I have asked. Okay, what do you want? What do you want to see more of? What do you want to hear more of? What do you, you do you like the length? Do you not like the length? Longer, shorter? Uh, projects that you're work. Sorry about the uh. Projects that you're working on. And do you think painting bricks would look great in rainbow? Okay, so that's y'all's homework for this week. Uh, I will put the links for everything down below. I'll put the links down below. Work on stopping with the uhs and the ahs. I... I'm sorry. And invite y'all to knit night. It would be so phenomenal to be able to do a knit night with y'all. How cool would it be for you to watch me on a podcast, but then be able to interact with me more than just watching me say stuff to you. You could say stuff to me. That How cool would that be? That would be awesome. And we've had people from all over, like not even in the U.S., join, which is awesome, too. Other states, we've had uh, Illinois and North Carolina and West Virginia join. So, I'm, I'm excited, y'all. you got to join me. It's so much fun. And I don't love having a one-way conversation. I kind of feel like, I don't know. I'm not to the part where I love it yet. Bodie says hi. <laughs> he is the washing his dog. I think that dog bathes twice a day. If we could just get his breath to smelling good, then he might smell good. <laughs> Hashtag dog problems. <laughs> So, I won't keep y'all longer. I feel like I'm just, you know, <laughs> driveling at the mouth now. But I want you to have a good night. Please answer the questions that I have posted. That is, do you like it? Do you don't like it? What do you want to see different? Longer, shorter? Uh, what are you working on? And do you think that painting bricks would look good in rainbow? Those are the questions. And I'll talk to you next week. I hope everybody's doing well. Join our knit night. Let me know if you're not. And we'll try to uplift and support and encourage and keep everybody going until we get through this. We're going to make it. I know we are. So y'all have a great week and I'll see you next time.